All right, welcome to part two of our E3 2014 coverage special yeah, yeah. extravaganza, or as it is going to be dubbed for official purposes and branding, GTV episode 104. That's like a first for us, releasing two episodes back to back, but I think it does make sense in this instance. All the same crew is still here except for MT, who has departed. Kahi will be departing shortly. But before he leaves, the next conference we are going to discuss is going to be EA. And Kahi has some stuff to say about one or two things they announced at EA. So please go forth, and then you can depart okay. with peace in your mind. Really? Okay. And your face. <laughs> yes, and my face as well. Battlefront, uh, really excited for Battlefront. Really, really excited for Battlefront. Played Battlefront 2 all the time. It's my favorite. You know, there wasn't much to show there. Uh, Mirror's Edge, also really good. Love Mirror's Edge. Glad they're doing a reboot. First game had really great concept, really great environment. Story kind of sucked, so glad they're doing that. But Mass Effect is the big deal for me because I love Mass Effect. I got, I bought the trilogy just last year. Was it last year? I think. Last year, I bought the trilogy, and I went through all of it. I went through all of it. I played every single game back to back to back. I uh, I went th- – I mean, I, I did everything. I did every single side mission. Like, I did not move from one game to the next if I didn't download all the DLC and commit every single side mission. So I had it 100% uh, outside of, like, Mass Effect 1 has those achievements where you have to get all the crew members, and it's a pain in the rear, so I didn't do that. Other than that, 100% did all the games – uh, have almost all the DLC, except for some of the later uh, Mass Effect 3 ones. Mass Effect did not... Like, they showed absolutely nothing from Mass Effect this year. No, they, they, basically showed, showed, they, they showed confirmed, some concept they art. confirmed Krogan, and they indirectly confirmed sequel. <laughs> and not prequel. They, in, they showed sci-fi concept art and an N7 logo, and something that looks kind of like a Krogan, and they said, we are working on the new Mass Effect. Imagine what we can do with the you know, with the new next-gen graphics, the next-gen power, and you will have to imagine because they show you absolutely nothing. <laughs> this is terrible. It's a sad world where Marty O'Donnell gets fired and Casey Hudson stays on board. Casey Hudson, the man responsible for dooming an entire franchise to death. Not to death. That's hyperbole. It's yeah, hyperbole. hyperbole. Sorry. Yeah, really, thank you. Uh, hyperbole. Hyperbole. Yeah. <laughs> he he did, but Casey Hudson uh, rumored apparently locked himself in a room uh, with uh, one other writer and wrote the ending of Mass Effect Three. Didn't submit it for peer review and just made out the ending. And that you know that's the ending that caused so much controversy and was released. Mass Effect is a franchise that is now in complete turmoil. No one really knows how it's going to go out, and they should have taken this chance to really be like, no. We're going to give you concrete details. This is what's happening. This is what's going to be about. You can either take it or leave it, but this is where the franchise is going forward. They didn't. They showed concept art. A lot, a lot of concept art. Mm-hmm. So, in that vein, yeah, uh, I'm kind of disappointed. Even It's even less than the Zelda announcement. The Zelda announcement was kind of like, they didn't really show a lot, but at the same time, they showed gameplay. I mean, they didn't show gameplay. They showed an engine stuff, and they showed, like, a big reveal for the character, and, you know, and stuff about the location where you're going to be in. Mass Effect had nothing, literally nothing about the new game. If you went in knowing that they're going to make a Mass Effect game, you came out knowing basically what you need to make. It's a sequel. There's Krogan. There's humans. It's good enough for me. That's my that's my thoughts on EA, and uh, with that I'll have to take my my. Uh, you can hear people talking in the background because I do have to go. I'm All sorry right. I couldn't be here for the rest of it. That's okay. But nothing really exciting happens. So don't stop listening to the episode. But nothing really interesting happens in the rest of the the conference. So. All right. Goodbye, Kahi. We bid you adieu. Stay. Goodbye. Okay. So, two down. Two down. <laughs> who will who will survive till the end? We have me, LJ, Takuma Nuva, and Mange, who is hosting the call but not speaking at all. And will we get Kitty in? Time will tell. But in the meantime, 
Takuma, you mentioned you had some stuff to say about EA. I'm curious as to what you thought of everything they announced, anything in particular. Yeah. Well, what I thought about everything? Yeah. Um, that might be a lot of ground to cover. I mean, Just go for it. You, 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 okay. you... I've had them for a lot of years. <laughs> I found my wristwatch today after moving the bed away from the wall three different times. And, oh, we're talking about EA specifically. Yeah, EA specifically. <laughs> oh, okay. So, not even kidding. If you had come to me like a year and a half, two years ago, and told me that I would one day be excited for an EA press conference, I probably would have slapped you in the face, thrown you in a lake, <laughs> and then insulted your mother. I don't know. Wow. But I'm not even kidding. I mean, not saying that I liked the conference that much, but EA's conference was the one I was most looking forward to at E3 this time around. Let me guess. And I mean, Battlefront. Yes. <laughs> and the stream cut out on me when they did what little they did. Yeah, and I didn't even see it. Okay, so, I mean, I own two consoles, the Wii and the Xbox. And I don't mean the 360 or the one or anything. I mean the Xbox. Wow. And by far, the single game I have played most was Battlefront 2. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a lot of fun. And here's my, okay, so here's kind of my concern. EA got Battle, EA got Star Wars, so they're doing Battlefront. That's good, maybe. Correct me if I'm wrong, but this is being done by the same uh, team, or what's the word I'm looking for? Same company Developer. that did Battlefield. Kenny Develop- is here! Yes. <laughs> yes. Battlefield. So here's my, pretty much my biggest concern, is that they won't make a Star Wars Battlefront, but instead they'll make Battlefield with a Star Wars theme. I want well, the things that make Battlefront, Battlefront. I have I have only one thing, one response to that, because it's a very valid concern. And that response is, at least it's not Disney. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, man. Very yeah, actually, have any Star Wars... Wars characters been announced for Disney Infinity yet? Because I feel like that's a thing. That'll be a thing if they have. It will. De- it will definitely be a thing. But no, they focused on Marvel characters to go around. Yeah, but I mean, like even some of the stuff that was going to happen with Battlefront Three. The only thing that I can really think of is the ground to space battles that are going on simultaneously. That is something I really want. Yeah. I mean, basically, if EA pulls this off. I will forgive them enough to not completely and totally hate their guts entirely. If they don't, then I don't think I'm allowed to say such things. <laughs> nope. Gotta keep a lid on it. Their face. Their face. We'll go with that. Good call. Well, I, you know, I, I think it'll be okay. It is a very valid concern that it'll just be battlefields with the Star Wars skin over it, but I think they're smart enough to realize they gotta do more than that. But you see, that's just my concern. Or if it was any other company, yeah, they just gotta be smart enough. EA just gotta be smart enough. Yeah, like Dice as a studio knows what they're doing. This is the I sound think, of my brain yeah, melting. EA may think differently. <laughs> so we will see. Honestly, this is the way I look at it. It's a toss-up as to which has more potential to be terrible. Star Wars Battlefront by EA or Episode 7 by Disney. Yeah. Okay. Anything else in particular? Well, are we just going to go down a list for EA or am I just pulling out what I care about? I have a list. I was just wanting to get your thoughts as to what you yeah. cared about before we went down it. Uh, hey, I'm learning as you guys talk, so this is great. Oh, did you even, huh. did you have you like heard nothing from EA? Meso, I every day that has been E3, I have been working and so busy that I haven't had time to care about anything other than the Chief Saga and Destiny. Okay, then this ought to be good then. <laughs> On the job learning, but you go first, Takuma. Um, okay, I mean, other thing, 
Mirror's Edge 2, which I know Kai yes. mentioned. Hype, hype, hype. Um, yes, yes, yes. And I know some people are complaining about the fact that both with Battlefront and Mirror's Edge that, oh, we didn't get to see a whole lot of anything but like people working on it and concept art and stuff. I don't see that as necessarily a bad thing. I mean, I want to see that they're taking their time. I don't want them just churning out a random trailer to say, hey, we're still working on it. When, I mean, the stuff they're showing pretty much already does that. What I do notice about Mirror's Edge from the little stuff they were showing is that I have more confidence in the combat mechanics of the second game. Because I know a lot of, and a lot of people will agree with this, the combat was weak with the first game. It felt kind of I will ag- tacked on. I know, I can't even agree because I haven't even played the first game, but I played the demo, and oh. yeah, the combat didn't feel... That it's good. like, yeah, it's like they needed to put something in there because, I mean, I don't know, action or something, but it just didn't flow very nicely. But it looks like with the new one, they're going with less guns, more melee, which I feel could work better in a parkour game. I am wondering, though, how they're going to explain away all the guns. Yeah. I also, unpopular opinion time, I like the new look for Faith more than the old look for Faith. I will concur with you there as well. That I... pretty much covers my opinion of Mirror's Edge, too. All right. Hype, hype, hype. With that being Other than s- that, I mean... I'll just move down the list. What was it? Okay, we'll yeah, go through go it as we that. go. First off, Battlefront. We already talked about it. They showed off like early in-game footage. Uh, Kini, this will be good for you. Takuma may be good for you. I don't know. Dragon Age Inquisition, they showed off. And it was also at the Microsoft conference, but we did not mention it. And it has impressively large open environments. It all looked really good. They did actually show gameplay. It was impressive. There was gameplay shown, and there were a lot of stuff going. There was a lot of stuff going on. I couldn't really make heads or tails out of it. Watching the footage, somebody that's actually played the series could probably discern more than I was able to. But it's, link this, yo. I don't have no links, and we're not looking at it in the in the video because I had to take too long. No, we can do this. Hold on. Okay, man. fine, fine. Meso. No, Meso, you should you should know by now how quickly I view videos. I just take like three looks at things when I need to, so I'm like doot 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 done. Okay, fine. Uh, Let's see. You know what? You know what? I'm Keen. searching it up myself. Hmm. Do, 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 do. You know what? Nope. Air I gosh, am a genius. Ha 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 ha. I think this is it. I could be wrong. But yeah, they showed it off and I really think I should play Dragon Age at some point. Kenny, would you recommend it to somebody that liked Mass Effect? Is it like the same kind of game, more or less? Uh, as much as I would love to say, like, okay. I would not recommend it to someone who loved Mass Effect. Like, Why did it have a better ending? Actually, <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. I love Mass Effect ending, by the way. We've already. Then why don't you marry this is, a road that's, this is a road that's been traveled. <laughs> Anyways, the the main reason I, I say that is not because Dragon Age is a bad game compared to Mass Effect. In fact, it's a great game. The issue is, is if you liked Mass Effect because of the story it told, and that's why you played Mass Effect, it's a great game and totally play it. If you liked Mass Effect because the gameplay was fun, and the story it told was great, you are gonna hate. Dragon Age. Oh. Granted, I'm just kind of browsing like they've kind of changed the stuff again, but the issue is is that, like, I don't know if you ever played uh, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic, Meso? Nope. Yes. Um, What? Essentially, essentially it is is a real-time turn-based game, if that makes any sense whatsoever. It does. Because... So so basically everything happens in real time, but you have to actually, like, it's basically in turn. So you'll attack, then the other guy will attack. Then you'll attack, then the other guy will attack. 
And it, that was Dragon Age 1. And then Dragon Age 2, what they did was this basically change it up so that it's more like Mass Effect, you know, hit buttons and do make attacks and stuff. And so kind of just looking at the gameplay here, it kind of seems like they went down that road again with Inquisition. But at the same time, the gameplay is a lot um, more traditional RPG, which is to say Skyrim style running around for three hours before you actually get to something that's fun. <laughs> hmm. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, of course, there's always action and there's always stuff going on, but there's usually it's like, unlike Mass Effect, where every firefight felt feels like you're like, okay, I want to get to the next bit and these guys are in my way. So you get really hyped up and you just like blast through them. In Dragon Age, it's kind of like sometimes it's at the point where you're just like, I really want to get to the next part and I really don't want to deal with these guys oh, at all. I, that makes sense to me. Yeah. Let's see. And so, that is my that that is the closest I can get to a scathing review of the Dragon Age series. Well, there you go. This is, this is already off to Sometimes a good start. it feels like you. Oh, and then there's also the fact that to this day I only ever finished Dragon Age Origins once, and that took me three years. And oh. I've never finished Dragon Age two, and I've played. Or I have four different playthroughs going on it, and I've never finished. <laughs> It's... Wow. Well, maybe the third one will be better then. Um, the next, the next thing they announced, Kahi was ranting about it before he left and before you came on. Are you aware they did in fact announce the new Mass Effect game? Uh, I am aware they had some sort of announcement. Yes. They gave no title. They gave no release date. They gave no details. But they did show concept art. There was a Krogan. There was an N7 logo which basically means it's a sequel not a prequel more or less uh, does not mean anything actually oh well if it was going to be a prequel to, it was going to be like ancient life. prothean age stuff in the n7s weren't around then so hey oh if it was going to be a prequel it was going to like they already they always said they were going to have characters we loved why would they make it ancient prothean stuff so like, what, what kind of prequel are we talking about? Like a, a week before Mass Effect 1, we have an adventure <laughs> that happened. Okay. Meso, I, I don't know if you're aware of this, but there is a year in between Mass Effect 1 and 2, and there's also, I think, uh, about, I want to say 20 to 30 years in between when the actual like Mass Effect universe quote-unquote starts. With humanity finding the, um, uh, oh my god, why can't I remember what they're called? Uh, mass relay and the whole shepherd being a thing. Well, I guess if they're going to make a new game, it's probably going to be the start of a new trilogy. And yep. if they're going to make a new trilogy, they need to do something that will have enough content in it to, you know, be worthy of a new entry. What can top the Reapers if it's a prequel? Captain Captain David Anderson's interesting adventures. I don't know about that, Keeney. I don't know. I think it's going to be a sequel. <laughs> well, I don't. You know what? As my, I would love a sequel more than anything else. You know this, but I don't think. They're I think they're going to retcon the ending and make it indoctrination theory. Make a sequel. <laughs> <laughs> so what you're saying is. Oh my god, I'm so dead today. <laughs> it's okay, Keen. I'm I'm like what was oh my god, something else was retconned recently and everybody hated it and I didn't find it. What was that mess up? <laughs> Terror bad. That's the word you're looking for. Oh, right, right. X Men. X <laughs> Lol. <laughs> this is so this is how out of it I am today. X-Men, um, um, Days of Future Past, retcon, um, the third X-Men movie. Yes. And now Mass Effect's new sequel is going to retcon the third Mass Effect. Yep. And then, like, that was pretty much all the details they gave their working on it. And then after that, they literally spent, like, ten minutes talking about The Sims 4. 
and it was not interesting at all. I'll be honest, I like walked away from the computer and got some food while it was going on. So I've because EA. I've took no notes. And then after that, they spent another ten minutes talking about uh UFC and NHL. And I, I zoned out during that as well. <laughs> and then uh, and then a new game from Criterion. Uh, and oh, yeah. they're cool. There's a bunch of vehicles, cars, helicopters, ATVs, wingsuits, boats, jet skis, planes. Game plays very oh, early, and they didn't even give a title, but basically it's just crazy vehicle madness. So that could be fun. I approve. I will start. You will start. You will start. And then I will stop because everyone else did too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then I will start carrying. Did you do that on purpose? No, there's like a small problem. Black. Just go on. Oh, I was just gonna say I will start caring about games with like driving and racing and stuff like that involved in them when the when VR becomes a thing. Until then, nope. Well, I'm sorry, sir. Criterion's racing games are like the best. Yeah, but I'm it's... not a fan of racing games. Yeah, but you know what? <laughs> speed man need for speed so like a- after Criterion's Actually, that makes... game they spent another you know what I'll, I'll let you go first I was just going to say that makes me very happy that Criterion's making like a GTA of driving because that would be awesome pretty much but then I'm not even kidding you they spent another 10 minutes after Criterion talking about golf and Madden <laughs> So uh, of course. the theme of this EA conference is interesting stuff, 10 minutes of filler. Interesting stuff, 10 minutes of filler. Interesting stuff, 10 more minutes of filler. And then after Madden, they are announcing the... I'm not sure if this has already been announced. EA has a MOBA now. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dawn Gate. <laughs> What's the deal yep. with that? I've seen a little... I've seen a little bit of gameplay. I mean, it's another, you know... Lol, Dota, Han, whatever. I mean, I've, there, I've, there've been so many more of those popping out lately. Yeah. I've, I just, I don't know why people bother. Honestly. Yeah, nothing's, Without, nothing's I mean, gonna eclipse Dota or League of Legends. You there, really so. need to do something like drastically different. I they feel like and I don't even think that like maybe Smite does that enough with just the third person thing. Yeah. But like, I know what they're trying to do with Dawn Gate, is kind of. Like, you know, you play Dota, and sometimes you lose because everyone plays their favorite character, which means that you either have, like, too many carries or too many supports or, you know, you got a bad team set up. Mm-hmm. Kind of the way they're doing Dawngate is that, in a way, you can play any character in any role. So, like, you choose a character, and they have their own abilities and stuff, but then you pick sort of a role. Are they going to be like a damage dealer? Are they going to be a support character? Are they going to be a jungler? And it gives them bonus stats or you know little passives and stuff so that they can fill that role. Yeah. Which is an interesting idea. But I don't know that's going to be enough to, you know, really get a piece of the MOBA pie. Yeah. Well, well considering Blizzard is going after a piece of the MOBA pie too. <laughs> That MOBA pie is delicious. And Blizzard always gets the Blizzard always gets the piece the biggest piece of the pie once they find it. <laughs> Sad well, but true. I mean, even I don't know. I don't like it, but I myself am kind of like Blizzard annoys me with what they've done to like, you know, Warcraft especially. And yet at the same time, I have to buy their game. Lol. I don't own a single Blizzard game. Wow. You are a disgrace to the man race. <laughs> well, after Dawn Gate, guess what they show? Think about everything I've mentioned thus far, and then EA, what's left? Golf. No, they didn't Oh, golf. wait, no. Uh, sports. They oh, did. wait, no. Uh, Sims. Y- I mean, it's um... a kind of sport. It's FIFA. Talked oh. about FIFA a lot. Yeah. And then, and then after FIFA, they closed with their final game. And LJ, 
I know you and I were very impressed with this. And I think everyone watching was, to a degree. It's the next Battlefield game, but with a twist. Eh. Battlefield Hardline. Pretty much nothing like you would expect from normal Battlefield. Instead, the theme is cops versus criminals, bank robberies, and so forth. If you have seen footage ever of like a GTA 5 heist mission, this is basically what it is, but amped up to 11 in multiplayer. And one side plays as the police, one side plays as robbers and criminals, and you have to like break into a bank and steal stuff, and the police have to stop you. And there's crazy stuff with helicopters and zip lines and collapsing construction cranes and... Those sly buggers. What? Oh, I'm just... Because, okay. So when GTA V came out, they um, advertised this whole idea of being able to go on bank heists with your friends and all this stuff. And basically caused the same kind of nonsense as was in the campaign that everybody loves so much in multiplayer. And to my knowledge, they still have not delivered on that. And the game has been out for nearly a year. <laughs> and they still don't have heists in multiplayer. Which is actually the main reason most people bought the game. So, yeah, right if... Now. Now, and now EA turns around and is like, Hey guys, so we got this other game that lots of people like to cause nonsense in. And now we're going to do this thing that lots of people wanted to do in another game. Not by us, but couldn't do. And now we're going to let you do it. Mm -hmm. It's basically like if Payday had been really popular. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Now, My only thought throughout the whole thing was, what on earth are they carrying in a suitcase that is worth all that? Good question. Diamonds. It's always diamonds. <laughs> well, I mean, alternatively, it's really expensive it's for them Pandora's to get any sort of return <laughs> on that operation. Well, LJ, I know you were very impressed by this. Do you have anything to say about Battlefield Hardline? Yeah, this was actually really good looking to me. Like, I've seen Battlefield games before. I've played a few Battlefield games before. Battlefield 3 was good. Battlefield 4 mm, did not impress me whatsoever. This looked really good. I really liked the whole concept, cops and robbers. Man, who here has not played cops? Me. But anyway, I, haven't. I just really liked that concept because I saw there was like a, a concept that a fan made up to make that a Call of Duty game. And you know they're going to do that at some point in the future now that EA's going for it. Probably. But I really enjoyed it. I liked the really defined sides. And when they start showing the teaser trailer, it kind of reminded me of a real-world instance where these two dudes in Hollywood tried to rob a bank. It's like this huge thing. It's like this huge standoff. Police versus these two guys. It's like all these guns and whatnot. And it's like that, only if the bad guys had more people and crazy amounts of planning and what not, and a ton more guns. What kind of robber in California has an RPG? I find that funny. But yeah, it looked like a really good game. I liked how the gameplay looked. I like how it played out. I'm really excited for it. However, the one thing, the one thing I dread is if they're going to take the AK-47 and give it partially wooden furniture and then another half polymer furniture... Don't screw it up, EA. <laughs> but no, I'm, it, it looks good. I'm, I'm legitimately interested to see how fans take the game. Very, very because true. Because it's already like some alpha. Like that. Yeah, the beta's out for like so, PC and PS4. I do have a concern about the game. I'll be honest. I've watched some gameplay of the beta, and I've compared it to the trailer. And the, the trailer was like the demo they did. It was gameplay. It was not CGI. It was a full gameplay demo. But obviously, because it's a conference, it was heavily scripted. And I really got to wonder, how is that going to translate to actual gameplay? Like, how often will it work that seamlessly, where all that stuff can happen and it has that much of a fun process? 
I would imagine, like most Battlefield games, Battlefield 3 included, it will eventually just devolve into random nonsense after a short while. With nobody really having any clearly defined goals, I expect. I don't know. We will see. But, I don't know. Definitely has potential. I'm going to keep a close eye on this game. Because I really want it to live up to its potential. I'm just not sure how often it will. But that was it for EA. And I'll be honest, Hardline was the best thing they showed, except maybe Battlefront, but that was early in-game footage, so it wasn't really the same. Yeah, there wasn't really much that they did show. Yeah. So that was great. Hardline was great. Everything in the middle was, was like, terrible or boring. Mass Effect was a non-announcement, except for Mirror's Edge. Mirror's Edge was good. Mirror's Edge was probably, mm -hmm. like, the best thing in the middle. And then everything else was, you know, Mass Effect non-announcement, Dragon Age, really quick gameplay demo. They rehashed the CG trailer they showed at Microsoft's conference, and they did a one-minute gameplay demo that was not really too impressive. So, if going by our grading scale, if we were to grade EAs, I'd probably give Ubisoft a D. What was there was good. There wasn't much of it. Everything else sucked, pretty much. So... Yeah. Wait, Ubisoft or EA? Oh, did I say Ubisoft? I meant EA. I think so. I have Ubisoft on the brain because they're next, and Ubisoft was my least favorite conference. <laughs> so. Ooh, Assassin's Creed. Division. <laughs> yeah, okay. And that's that was, it. That was pretty good. So here's here's Ubisoft. Let's Let's get real here. This is what Ubisoft did. They had this host that hosted Ubisoft's conference for like three years. I think her name's Aisha Tyler, and she tries to be funny and cool and more lively than any of the other commentators, and to her credit, she does it well, but every year she's on Ubisoft's comfort, she's just so, she's annoying to me. I don't know why. I don't know what about her, but it just... It just Ubisoft's conferences are a chore to watch because it's like they're trying to be cool and not it it doesn't work and true to form you know they open up with Far Cry 4 and that's cool it's a CGI trailer or whatever later on the Sony's conference actually has gameplay but then what do they immediately follow up with i'm not even kidding like a 10 minute segment of just dance 2015 where the people are dancing to Lady Gaga music on stage <laughs> and it's atrocious <laughs> and it drags on way too long and that's whatever. But it is salvaged because they continue to show a CG trailer for The Division. And that is quite nice. Although the gameplay trailer was at Microsoft, I liked it better. This trailer was a story-based trailer. And they basically showed the story, which can be summed up as Pandemic is in New York. Not the company, but an actual pandemic. And... <laughs> Stuff happens, people get sick, pandemonium in the streets, divisions of people try to do good. That's the division. And graphically, it still looks as impressive as it always did, coming 2015. And then, they had The Crew, which is a racing game that they announced last year, and I believe it's a pretty big deal, I think it's open world. And you can drive all around. But the trailer was so weird. They like sped it up by like 200%. And it was cars driving at super fast speeds while calming music played. And that's, that, that's literally all the trailer was. It was very weird and completely uninteresting. It did not play to the game's strengths at all. Last year they had a big demo and an explanation of what it is. It's like it did not work for me. And then they had Assassin's Creed Unity, and we talked about that earlier a little bit, but Keeney, I'm not sure if you've heard this. Four-player co-op in Assassin's Creed Unity. Yep. And they cut out competitive multiplayer. Facts here about that. There will, yep. There will be no multiplayer. Never played an Assassin's Creed game. <laughs> yeah. And Next up, they did another thing where they spend like 10 minutes talking about a game no one really cares about. It's some shape-up 
Xbox One exclusive fitness game for the Kinect, and they're trying to make they they try to make exercise less of a task, and they put the player in the gamified exercise scenarios where you're like dancing and doing push-ups with quote-unquote weights on your back, and it looked very you know, unappealing. If they could actually make a game that implements the exercise in a way that isn't just so gosh darn gimmicky, it might work for a person like me who doesn't exercise, but... <laughs> eh. Yeah. I so mean... That, that uninterested it, me. Yeah. And then next up, they had a very interesting game that, I'll be honest, I didn't even watch because I was BRB because I went to go get a drink because that fitness game was on. And when I came back, this game had already, you know, not... It, it was done. So I've only heard about it. Valiant Hearts, The Great War. And it's a 2D game set during World War One. And I don't really know much else about it because I didn't see the trailer. So that's that's that. And then, what do you know? The conference is over. They have one final game, and it does go on for a while. But Ubisoft had by far the shortest conference, or at least the one that was the most sporadic in announcements. But this was a big one to end on, and it was probably the best thing they showed. A new Rainbow Six game, Rainbow Six Siege. And it was this huge, overblown gameplay demo where people had to break into a home to save a hostage. And it was it looked very nice. Very, very nice. Keeney, have you ever played Rainbow Six at any sense? Uh, yes, I have, actually. Do you enjoy it? Um... Yes, but not in the sense of, hey, this is a really awesome game, and this is awesome, and I love it. More in the kind of, like, dead or Dark Souls sense. Really? Every time I've ever played Rainbow Six, that game... I kid you not, is like the most punishing game ever. It is the Dark Souls of first-person shooters, as far as any Rainbow Six I've ever played. Hmm. Well, a new one's coming, and it looked good. <laughs> Woo! So, that was Ubisoft. I'll be honest when I say they did terrible. Um, the Division, Nothing. Far Cry 4... Assassin's Creed, it was all CGI trailers, except I guess Assassin's Creed did have a really brief gameplay demo. Just dance and shape up and that Valiant Hearts game, I don't really think anyone knew what they were. Well, Valiant Hearts, nobody knew what they were. It was they, they, Nobody knew what it was. There we go. Got my words right. It was very obscure. And the other two, no one cared about. And then the crew had a terrible t trailer, a terrible representation. The only thing of interest really was Rainbow Six Siege. So with that being said, if I had to grade them in comparison to the other conferences, I'd literally give them like, I don't even know, maybe an E if I'm generous, an F maybe. But n no, an F's too generic. I'll give them an E. Okay. E for exceptionally effort. uninteresting yeah i guess e for effort and then the last conference we will talk about is sony and can i just say one more thing about ubisoft okay yeah sure ubisoft where was beyond good and evil dead and in the ground at least dead. with mirror's edge 2 and the new battlefront they under. showed people working on it beyond good and evil nothing it's like <laughs> I got so excited when the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4 became a thing, not because I wanted to buy them, because, oh, oh, they said they were going to wait for the next wave of consoles to bring out Beyond Good and Evil. Still nothing. Give it a year, just like the last Guardian. Give it a year. It'll happen eventually. All right. So Sony had a lot of interesting stuff to live up to this year because last year they smashed Microsoft in a pretty bad way. And this year everyone was like, would they do it again? How can they follow up on last year? And I'll be honest, brutally honest, they did not really follow up 
on last year's at all. It was not a bad conference. It was a very good one, but it was not the crushing defeat that last year's was. It was more along the lines of, okay, let's just get our games out there. Let's do a strong showing. And they would have walked away the victor were it not for the last third of the conference. Not even the last third, the last half. But we'll get to that later. So basically they opened with Destiny. And it had a CGI trailer and they announced when it is the when the beta is coming out. And I think they said July 17th. Get it. PlayStation 4 owners get it first on July 17th, I think. And then for everyone else it launches like two or three days later. And then it's also getting a new model. A white PlayStation 4 with a Destiny bundle when the game ships. So that's pretty cool. And then they announced, not they announced, they followed up with a new trailer for The Order 1886, which is a new IP they announced last year that got everyone's interest and then was promptly delayed until 2015. They had a trailer for it. It was some mix of real gameplay and CGI. It did look good. And then they ran a trailer for Entwined, which looked very, very strange. Some kind of rhythm game, and it's another one of those slightly obscure indie games which has a very niche audience, but the hook to it was it's available now, right now. The second they announced it, it was made public on the PS4 store, so that's pretty cool. And then they announced Infamous Second Son DLC, and it's backstory for one of the characters in that game. Then a big announcement. Little Big Planet 3. Hooray! So, Little Big Planet, the make your own level game, is back for Little Big Planet 3 on the PlayStation 4. I do not believe they announced a release date, but it is coming. And they had a very, very extended gameplay demo. And the reason why I loved this, it was not scripted. You could tell they were just playing a level, and they were failing at it, and it was not scripted at all. And I did like that about it. It was very fresh. It felt real, not artificial. And then probably the, the biggest announcement from the entire conference, if you want my honest opinion. The next game from From Software, makers of Dark Souls and Demon Souls. They announced Bloodborne, a gothic-looking game and true... To the name there was a lot of blood and I believe it is PS4 exclusive it is not a Souls entry but based on gameplay that happened after the conference it looks pretty much identical to those games so hey more Souls is never bad then they did show gameplay from Far Cry 4 and it's Far Cry with co-op and it's whatever but here's the big thing that they announced and this is revolutionary PlayStation 4 gamers will be able to invite other players to join their game online, even if those people don't own the game. Oh yeah, I heard about that. They gave no specifics. There's probably a catch somewhere, but apparently mm -hmm. you can do this, and that's a first, I think. The only thing that's ever done that before is like Nintendo DS, where if you had friends local playing with you, only one person had to have... The, the card to actually do multiplayer, like the game card. So that's neat. And then they announced Dead Island 2. And if Bloodborne was the biggest reveal, probably, Dead Island 2 by far had the best trailer for the entire event, because it was a dude jogging, and there was unfitting music playing, and... Like, he was jogging around, and zombies were coming up behind him, and he was so oblivious because he was listening to the music. And as he kept running, pandemonium was happening behind him, and he eventually turned into a zombie and was running, and it was it was great. It was a departure from the initial Dead Island trailer, which is really dark and grim and made waves in the community. This one's more true to what Dead Island actually is. Then they announced Disney Infinity 2. With Marvel characters. Uh, here's a big one. How many of you here have heard of Magicka? And I know LJ has. I know Keeney has. What about you, Takuma? I have. 
<laughs> I <laughs> had so much fun with Met- Why is LJ crying? Because he bought it and like never played it. <laughs> Everyone in dude. TTV, we all got the game, and then we didn't play it at all. Well, dude, I've got so much of that game. I have got. I want to finish yet. Magicka was one of one of favorite. I mean, okay, don't anymore. But I actually used to play video games quite a bit with my no longer boss. Okay, very okay. first time I introduced him to Magicka. We came, it was in the very first level, come up to like, there's the ship with a bunch of goblins and stuff. I throw up a big shield dome the instant he fires an arcane bolt. It bounces around inside a million times and gets us both killed. I had (laughs) never heard him laugh so hard at any other point in my life. I'm not even kidding. We (laughs) sat there staring at the whatever game over or you died or whatever screen for a good solid couple minutes. Because of just laughing so hard. Well, Magicka, in all its bugginess, is... Mm, it is I love that game. It is very no funny. no one plays it with me anymore. Well, maybe and LJ will. So many of the We're going to have to play kind of soon. References, yep. And yes, let's do it right now. Screw the rest of this. I mean, let's go. Wow, right now. No, we got to finish this. We're almost done. Well, <sighs> ma- they announced Magicka 2 <laughs> for console. Yes. Wait a minute, for consoles? Um, it's going to be PC as well. Probably. So there's no way they wouldn't. Uh, then a remastered Grim Fandango is coming out. I haven't played it yet. I don't even know what that is, but it's coming. Ooh, wasn't fun. It, I was going to say, wasn't that a Double Fine game? Yes. Or yes, am yes, I just Tim thinking Schaefer's. stuff up? Okay. I've heard it's good. Haven't gotten around to playing it yet. Okay. Then they add another indie montage, just like Microsoft had. And then a new Suda51 game called Let It Die. And Suda51 is so obscure. LJ was making jokes during the conference. It was like Bane, the game. Because <laughs> it was like Bane just going around killing people. <laughs> and that's pretty apt for what it was. And then some really odd game by the makers of Journey called Abzu. I still don't know what it is. It's some swimming underwater... Gazoon height. Abzu. And then probably the last announcement before everything went downhill. Uh, no Man's Sky, the procedurally generated exploration game that was announced last year, is back. They had a nice demo where your character seamlessly jumps from a planet to some space combat and back to another planet. Nobody knows really what Basically what I want to see from Star Wars Battlefront. Pretty much, yeah. It looks neat. I mean, it looked pretty, and I like the idea of, ooh, leave a planet, ooh, into space, ooh, another planet. But I don't get what all the hype is, because we don't actually see any, like, gameplay beyond fly, pew, 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 fly. Yeah. I need more than that to get hyped about a game. <laughs> That's true. Now, it's like they, they spent a huge chunk of the conference basically boring everyone to tears because they were talking about so much stuff. They were like, oh, they we're going to have a bunch of stuff on the show floor for like TV and t- free-to-play games or a thing, even though we already announced all those. They're coming. No more details, but they're coming. PlayStation Now is a thing. Oh, this t- Sony Televisions. That's that's cool. 100 Vita titles in development. We're not going to tell you what they are, but there's 100 in development. PlayStation TV. Yeah, and they've been in development for the last eight years. PlayStation TV is coming to America. <laughs> and then they, they kind of got things back on track, even though it took forever, and they showed gameplay from Mortal Kombat 10. And, well, for those that saw the CGI trailer and were like, so this is what gameplay is going to look like, eh, you're going to be disappointed. The game graphically looked very good. It did not live up to the CG trailer, as any sane person realized it would not. So that's coming. And then they went back to no games, and they talked about the Ratchet and Clank movie, which is interesting, I guess, for those that like Ratchet and Clank. 
And then mm. they ran a trailer for The Last of Us remastered and basically spoiled the game for everybody because there were a bunch of spoilers <laughs> in the trailer if you haven't <laughs> you know, played the game yet. And that's coming July 29th. They ran a huge overblown trailer for Metal Gear Solid V, which Met overblown is the name of the game for that series. This was a big deal. GTA V is coming next-gen consoles. I believe Xbox One, PS4, and PC are getting GTA V. So that is cool. Uh, Batman Arkham Knight. That's the thing. They showed mm -hmm. gameplay for that. It looked very impressive. But how you would expect Arkham Knight to look, it just graphically better with a Batmobile. Then they, like, went off the rails for a good 10-15 minutes talking about some comic book show thing. I forget what it was exactly. But it was not anything that really should have a place in the conference. It was not bad, but it should not have been at E3. And... It basically bored everybody to tears because nobody knew what it was, and people started making fun of it in the stream, and Mange kind of rallied to the guy's defense and said, okay, maybe it shouldn't be at E3, but it's not a bad thing. And you're right, it, he's right, it's not bad looking. It's just, I don't know, it was very weird that they took up such a big chunk of the conference talking about it. And then they got things back on track with... Uncharted 4, A Thief's End. And that is looking quite nice. But it's pretty much what you would expect from Uncharted. You know, it was a CGI trailer. No gameplay, that's okay, coming 2015. Possibly the end of the series, as the subtitle would imply. That's pretty much it for Sony. I'm getting sick of talking at length. Then stop talking mm -hmm. at length. How do you talk at short? Good question. No idea. Does anyone like... It, it, it's a bit tough talking about Sony when the only person here that has a PS4 Venom is not actually here. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's kind of tricky. But does anybody have anything? Does anyone else... I just okay, so uh, Disney Infinity, PlayStation. Its exclusive character is going to be the Hulk. Why is it not Spider Man? Good question. I mean, yeah. If you're gonna, if you, if yeah. 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 Basically, if I was if I was grading the conferences, Sony definitely had the best roster of games that they had. Like I'll be I'll be brutally honest, they had a ton of good stuff, even if not all of it is Sony exclusives. The games they had at their conference mm -hmm. was where they were great. Destiny, The Order, uh, Little Big Planet Three, Bloodborne, Far Cry Four, Arkham Knight. Dead Island 2, you know, uh, Magicka 2, that's a big one. Magicka 2 is pretty much the only, well, Magicka 2 and Arkham Knight are pretty much the only things I can get behind. Mortal Kombat. If Destiny was coming for PC, and then, uh, and then Uncharted going. at the end. Not all of its exclusives, but they definitely had the best roster of games. That being said, the conference itself, dude, that's a pretty apt description of the conference itself it was not exciting at all uh i feel like I, I sony so more like um i got nothing <laughs> that's a pretty accurate description it was very boring probably a good half of it was nonsense that nobody cared about and it killed the hype for a lot of people however i can't really fault them for the announcements it was good all in all if I had to grade it, I'd give him the same grade I gave Microsoft to C for different reasons. 
Microsoft was just all around, you know, okay games, nothing really interesting, but the conference was good and it was moving at a rapid pace, kept you interested. Sony, the conference wasn't good, but the games were great. So I'm not going to bother crunching the amount of exclusives that each conference showed to determine who won E3 because I really don't care that much and this is dragging on far too long already. But that is that. Is that. Overall, that is E3 2014. What did you guys think all in all of the event? Keeney, you weren't even here for it, but based on what you've heard, anything standing Sounds out like at you? Very uh, interesting E3. The Master Chief Collection, you didn't get to give your thoughts on that. <laughs> Master Chief Collection, best idea since sliced bread, yo. And sliced bread is pretty good. Sliced bread is pretty great. It's almost Actually, essential. Sliced one might bread say. is shown to cut down the longevity of bread. So actually, it would be the worst idea since sliced bread. If you want to be listening to LJ that, talk well, like a smart person is scientifically well, proven to decrease the lifespan of every cell in a human's body by at least well, 15 years. In that case, years. so let's talk about the universe. Sliced bread or pre-sliced bread? Because there's a difference. Because I don't uh, do the pre-sliced bread. Oh, fudge! I right. just I just do homemade bread that I slice. I was I, I was gonna well I was thinking kind of like just all encompassing sliced bread if it's been pre-sliced or if it's like sliced as you then then it's a yeah but yeah <laughs> yeah but destiny yeah. mean I mean, destiny. I feel like there's better things out there than sliced bread because I mean worst comes to Fine. worst you Jeez. could just grab a loaf and butter it up, uh, bite it off. Master Chief Collection, cheese. better than cheese. Master Cheese Collection. <laughs> well, what about for people that are lactose intolerant? Okay, wait, oh, uh, wait a minute. Those that's, people that's an interesting question. Just if you had to compare <laughs> each game in the Master Chief Collection to a specific kind of cheese, what which cheese best fits each game? Like, which do you feel Gouda. represents each? Gouda fits them all. <laughs> Gouda. <laughs> Halo 1 is Swiss. Halo 2 is Papadon. <laughs> what about like a Limburger or Pepper Jack? Halo 4 is blue. Yeah, fit. Halo 4 is blue cheese. <laughs> Ew, must have been bad. <laughs> <laughs> Halo 3 is cheddar, I'll say. And wrap this up. Three can be Pepper Jack. Okay, yeah, fine. Pepper Jack. <laughs> what about string cheese? There's not enough games for the cheese. Halo ODST can be string That's cheese. The Okay. <laughs> Enough antics. Yeah, and then the DLCs. The DLC. No. The DLC is like cheese in a can. <laughs> Spray it on. <laughs> oh my gosh. Don't even do that. I had a bad experience with that stuff once. Uh, that should be the title episode. I Halo is cheese. I'll, I'll probably say the Master Cheese Collection. <laughs> oh, <man>. Okay. <sighs> Well, I guess that about wraps it up. Well, no, actually, LJ, what did you think of E3? You watched all the press conferences. Do you think it was okay? Do you think everybody did good? Do you think it could have been better? Uh, yeah, I think everybody did great, so they all kind of tied. But I'm slightly disappointed with specifically Nintendo. Okay, from first to, to last, Microsoft was good. However, I, th I think it was... More solid than last year's. Yeah. They didn't have as much controversy. They gave people what they wanted. That was that. However, the extreme lack of Gears of War is sure to have a gripe with many. Including Viper. EA's was good. However, sports bores me. Sports games are very different than game sports. Truth. Who's next? Ubisoft. Ubisoft had a lot of solid titles. They didn't do anything really wrong. It just I gave them an E. They did a lot of stuff wrong. Yeah. Wait. You must have zoned out when I was bashing them. I gave them an E. <laughs> yeah, no, I think I... Yeah. It was okay. Ah, well. Uh, okay, from what I can remember. I mean, the vision and... Uh, that other thing. Rainbow Six. That was Tom Clancy titles. They do good with Tom Clancy titles. <sighs> and then Sony. Sony's... 
Also, they did good with what they were announcing. They did not do good with the conference. I nearly felt I was up all day for the conferences. That one nearly put me to sleep. Very nearly did. It was yeah. Boring. I'll be honest. I started again. I started listening to music while you were watching it because I was just like bored watching all of it. Yeah. Then finally, Nintendo's. And I swear, Nintendo, I'm... Like I said, they did good. They were very funny. I liked that. They were easily the funniest conference and probably the one that I enjoyed watching the most. Mm -hmm. However, they were a lot like what I've heard the new Spider-Man movie is. It was good, but it could have been great. They Truth. were in the just perfect, perfect position to strike down everybody. They could have been like, you want a new Metroid? Bam! Metroid fans rejoice. You want a new Star Fox? Bam! Zelda. We're going to hint at it, though. You want a new Zelda? Bam! Controversy. <laughs> you want a new Mario? Well, make your own. You want an anime? Bam! <laughs> I mean, they did good. They could have done great. Yeah. Are there any winners from E3? Absolutely not. They all tied in my eyes. Everybody did Sony great for different negative reasons. points for being bored. Everybody did good for different yeah, reasons. They were all very so, good. Oh yeah. I I think next year that new game developer that here's up and coming, LJ Incorporated, they're gonna steal a show. No, they're gonna crash and burn. <laughs> next year Ouya wins. The Ouya guys. Remember, yeah. Ouya? <laughs> <laughs> remember so, that thing it was an that people paid money it for was... to get developed? And then nobody cared about. Yeah, <laughs> I remember. Yeah, poor Next people you know, paid it money was, for I that. I want to start seeing VR stuff. That's what I want to see. Oculus Rift by Facebook. <laughs> yeah, I'm still... No. Anyway, I still Facebook Oculus Rift. Quite. Creepy Rift. Creepy Rift. <laughs> Okay, well I think Stalker Rift. Developed by LJ. Vin. Stoculus Rift. Man, I can't tell which is more boring, E3 or this review. Yeah, the, this your review. Face. First, first half was good. Second half, not really, because nobody here can comment on any of it, because nobody uh, has a PS4, unlike you. Honestly, You're though, right. Vin. I don't know which is more unreliable, Kahi during graduation season or you. Well, Venom, I think the did you apply for your alpha access to Destiny? No, but I think Why LJ wouldn't... needs to apply to his better insult subscription. <laughs> oh, that would de that would definitely be beneficial. Yes. Well, Vin, we were just about to end, but while you're here, I may as well get your opinions on anything they announce that you want to give opinions on. From any conference. Okay, run me, run me down a list. Ah. Uh, I, I... Division, Assassin's Creed, uh, no, no, Dragon no, 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 Age no, no, no. Inquisition. I'll, I'll, I'll do the proper list. I'll do the proper list. Bonus round. Lightning round. Wow. Okay. Meso, I hate your guts. So I'm just gonna I'm, I'm gonna run down a list of names. Stop me when I get to something interesting. Uh, Call of Duty: Advanced Warfare, Forza Horizon, Assassin's Creed Unity, Sunset Overdrive, Fable Legends, Project Spark, Ori and the Blind Forest, Halo Master Chief Collection. Okay, I'll go on. Inside. <laughs> Indie Games. Rise of the Tomb Raider. Witcher 3. The Division. Scalebound. Crackdown. That's Microsoft. Anything that jumps out at you besides the obvious? Your face. <laughs> oh! Come on, Vin. Don't do this. No. No. Okay, well. I don't feel like reading any more lists. I've talked myself Woo, to death. The division! 
Yeah. Wow, the division. I'll pretty much summarize. I because I I know you well enough to know the stuff you're interested in. Assassin's Creed's cool. The division's cool. Halo's cool. Smash Brothers is cool. Mario Maker. Destiny. Uh. Yeah. Anything else that I missed? Battlefront, maybe? Yeah, Battlefront. You like Battlefront, right? I don't like any of those games that you mentioned. Okay. Well, then that's the, that's the case. We're just going to end. <laughs> You're mean, Vin. You're just a pessimist I mean... and a hater. <laughs> the pessimist, the pessimist, the pessimist, You're also the reason Mac. we can't have nice things. All right, here's what I have to say about E3 overall. It sucked. <laughs> it sucked okay. to get a life. Let's go ahead and end this. All right. I'm Venom. That's a Messinac. That's LJ. That's Keeney. That's Envy. That's Takuma. And that's shut right. up! Goodbye, everybody. Uh, See you all next time on eBay today. Oh, wait. <laughs> Too soon, Vin. The wounds are still fresh. Don't pour the proverbial salt. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. I guess for real. Thank you for listening to TTV episode 103 and 104. The double TTV. We'll see how well this goes. Use this as an experiment of sorts. And that sucks. That we've, we've had a huge cast come in and go. So we'd like to thank you all for listening if you did. It's an exciting time to be a fan of video games. That much is for sure. And next week we will resume our regularly scheduled LEGO news and hashtag BBB2015 petitions. In the meantime... We will see you all next time on the next exciting episode of the TTV Podcast. I'm Messinac. I'm LJ and expecting a botched name order. You know it. There's a name order? Botch complete. <laughs> <laughs> Someone. <laughs> this is what happens when you have ten people who have no idea what's going on. This is what I have to do. I figured you guys would be here long enough this to know the score. This is what happens when you have someone on that doesn't know how to count. There's Actually, like Meso... Hey, no point hitting people. me my weak spot. Okay. See, see Me Meso, Meso the, the real thing is, is that I never know if I'm last or if I get to be before the guest <laughs> nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> I never know if I, I am know, the you're guest basically a guest or if point. I get to be before the guest. Yeah, you really are a guest just at this I point. Really You're am. going after Takuma. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. Also, hi, Takuma. Yeah. What's up? Let's take it from the top. <laughs> I'm messing it. I'm LJ. Bot nearly complete. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Venom. I'm Kitty. And I am Evil Blockmaster Takuma Nuba. <laughs> Holy <laughs> crap! <laughs> what the? What's that? <laughs> that's that. That's a nice. That was amazing. <laughs> that's a what about that game? Okay, that's not amazing. I think. Yeah, I, no. I, I think. I think we can destroy Sorry. yourself. <laughs> Let's get off this crazy train. Destroy Goodbye, your everyone. face. Goodbye, everyone. <laughs> Goodbye now. <laughs> Adios. See you all next time on TTV.